Hi everyone, uh, it's Livinia here and today I'm going to show you how to make this card. I posted this earlier on a website, or a Facebook page rather, and it got so many reactions and requests for a tutorial that I kind of felt obligated to do one. <laughs> so here we are. Um, this is called a spinning card or something like that. Um, it looks complicated but it really isn't that bad. So let me show you how I made this. So you start off with a piece of uh, thick whisper white. It should be a heavyweight card because it's going to take a bit of strain from the string. So this is our thick whisper white card from Stamping Up. As you can see I put some measurements on here and I'm sorry about the bad lighting but I've never done a video at night before so I'm working with some shadows here. Sorry about that. Anyway you can see I've made a mark on the card here at 3 eighths of an inch and then another a further inch down. And the same at the other end, so 3 eighths of an inch from the bottom, and then another further inch up. Then I've made a card along the top, uh, sorry, a mark along the top, which is 1 and 3 quarter inches. And the same at the bottom. And then I joined those up, okay? This is just to give you a guideline to cut to. So all we're going to do is going to take our scissors, and we're going to cut these lines that make the 1 inch piece just to the line that you made earlier. Okay, so I think I'd agree this is fairly straightforward so far. But I love it when you can make a wow card that actually isn't that complicated. I mean, my my version has quite a lot of detail in it from the embellishments, but you can keep this much simpler if you want to. Um, <clears throat> I'm afraid I love to put a bit of work into my cards and my ladies don't seem to mind. <laughs> so. I get away with it. Right, now what we're also going to need to do is cut a little, some little small uh, snips in here just for, that we pop the other way for the skewer to go through. So this is more by eye than anything else. It's not really that important um, if it's exactly along the middle or anything like that. And you're going to have to just um, trial and error with the size of skewer that you're going to be working with. Right, now that we've done that, I'm going to pop these out the other way and fold them at the end, like this. Okay. And the same on the bottom. You can score these lines if you want to. I'm just trying to do this quickly for you guys. I did actually score it on my version, my proper version, if you like. And just take your bone folder and burnish your folds, both sides. So you can see we've already got that sort of basic shape <clears throat> that the card has. Now, in order for the skewer to fit through, you're going to need to pop this the other way. And I actually found this the trickiest part, and um, I found that it helped to put my scissors in here, just to bend it down a bit. In actual fact, it's easy just to put the skewer through. So the skewers, I bought a whole bunch of them on Amazon, big, big pack of them, very cheap. Uh, they're almost the right length for the card. I probably cut off about uh, an eighth of an inch or three sixteenths of an inch. So. We're going to pop our skewer, like I said, <laughs> this was the trickiest part. Oh, all right, this is what you don't do at home. Let's make these a little bit bigger, these cuts. See, I said this before, it's like live telly. You never know what's going to go wrong. Problem is, if you make the cuts too big, then your skewer is going to be very loose. I'm not sure why I bothered doing that, it's already torn, but never mind. Obviously, if you're doing this at home, you're going to take slightly more care. There we go. 
I'm not going to make the complete card for here, here for you in any case because that's going to take far too long but I will show you what I did okay all right so that's the basic structure now to make the um, skewer spin we're going to take um, a pokey tool and you're going to make a little hole just up from your um, cut here towards the center but not right at the center if you have a small hole pinch you can do it that way but I don't so I'm just using my poke tool and then we're going to make another one a little distance from the edge about the same height There we go. Then we're going to take, <clears throat> sorry, oops, a little piece of um, whisper white twine. Uh, it's not called twine. What's it called? Baker's twine. It is twine. And the first bit we're going to do, I'm never good at threading needles, so bear with me. Is we're going to stick it. Let me do this a different way. <laughs> Otherwise, it might be here all night. Stick it through to the back on your first hole and try not to let it all get puckered up like I've just done. Oh, this is always the way it goes, isn't it, when you try and do something quickly? Okay, now we're going to need to um, stick this to the back. By the way, don't worry about all your pencil marks because they're going to get hidden because you're going to cover this card with another card, okay? Oh, and probably what I should have told you is this is a standard card size. So, half an A4 folded in half. Um, the only thing that I did was I cut off about an eighth of an inch at the end when the card was folded, okay? Because when you stick it into another card, it's going to stick out slightly. So cut an eighth of an inch off of this edge and then it will fit perfectly. Okay, so we stuck one end down. Now we're gonna wind the twine around the stick five or six times. So that's one, two, three, four, whoops, five. And then you're gonna feed it through the other hole you made. This is so much fun, isn't it? <laughs> Ah. Okay, come on. No, we're going to do the tweezers. Like I said, if I wasn't doing this live, or well, live as in it's being videoed, uh, I would take a little bit more care over this. But for the purposes of showing you how it works, this works just fine. Okay, so now the idea is that when you um, close the card, the stick twirls, okay? So you're just going to have to work on the tension that you want so that there's enough there for it to twirl when you close it and when you open it. So, so if you can see that, you can see when it goes too loose and then when you pull it open and closed. So that needs to be a bit tighter. So that's the basic idea, okay? Without the tear here, obviously, if you're making this at home. <laughs> I'll be checking. <laughs> okay, so once you've found that position, then you're just going to need to stick your threads down. Um, from experience now, I would say, make sure you use something very sticky, maybe do several you don't want it to come loose once you've assembled your whole card. Okay, um, when you've decorated everything on the inside, are you then going to stick the card into another card? Uh, for this I've used plain whisper white because two layers of thick whisper white are going to get a bit much. And when you stick it down, you see why we took off that extra little bit at the end because if you hadn't, it would have been sticking out 
the edge here, okay? You can always trim a bit as necessary if you haven't cut it quite flush. So that then is your card. I'm not going to decorate this card for you, but I'm going to show you what I did, okay? So I've used the uh, little bees from uh, the Dragonfly Dream stamp set. So I've stamped some and just coloured them and cut them out. And other ones I've used the dye uh, after I've coloured them. So these two are open because they've been cut with a dye. And the other ones on the other side are hand cut and so they're closed. And what you're going to do is you're going to stick them by the wings but these still move okay because when you close your card they need to have to lie flat so if you stick them to the skewer they might get caught in the wrong position okay you still need to be a bit careful when you close it anyway you don't fold it over now in order to make your skewer not pop out of your card I've used a little strip of white card I think it's about an, uh, an eighth of an inch maybe slightly more and curled it with my bone folder and put glue on it and just rolled it around in a strip so that it creates a little bit of width so if you can see that and then to finish it off I just added a little bit of our gold um, which is no longer available but uh, gold washi tape um, but you can leave it white or you can make it any other colour you like then for the front um, the way I've decorated it is uh, this is early espresso and I've underneath cut uh, an aperture out of it with uh, one of the circle dies in the layering circles. Um, or actually, sorry, I cut it out with the largest of the stitch shapes framelits and then cut an aperture in that with one of the circle dies. And because I was layering some of our um, wood uh, textured paper over it, you didn't see that part of it had been gutted and then I used that circle to then make a frame around the outside. The honeycomb textured effect is done with um, our hexagons dynamic embossing folder but rather than embossing it I've inked up the inside on the side where it says Stampin' Up the upside down for you um, <clears throat> with some um, brown ink and then just laid up my um, so saffron paper on top to get that sort of stamped pattern, okay? I don't know if you can pick, um, pick this up on the video, but I've used some uh, Wing of Stella to um, add some glitter to the wings of the bees. Um, the sentiments, the happy birthday is from Teeny Tiny Wishes, um, which is this one here. And I needed something to tie back the um, the bee into the birthday card. So I found the perfect sentiment in Cool Treats. I hope your day is as sweet as you are, which I think works absolutely perfectly for this. The flowers are from, um, well, what's this set called? Here we go. Flourish Thinlets. And these have some fabulous, fabulous dyes in there. So it's a large flourish and a little small one. And for the inside, I've used this strip one here. So I've covered the workings of this with a strip of wood pattern paper, okay? And then put the decorative die cut over the top. Uh, what else can I tell you? Before I stuck the decorated layer down, I put a bit of um, uh, white baker's twine wrapped around a few times and tied a string, uh, tied, tied a bow on it. And that's probably all there is to tell about that. So I hope that's given you an idea of how to make this card. Have fun giving it a try for yourselves. And I hope you'll tune in next time. Thanks very much.